Yes, it's day one, it's inner city golf, and we're starting in the city of Glasgow. Right, so I should mention the first thank you needs to go to the organiser of the, this trip because what they did was they put me in, or let me loose rather, in Glasgow city centre on a bank holiday Monday and I took advantage of course of Glaswegian hospitality. Perhaps stayed out a little bit too late and that is what inner city golf is all about. We were in the city last night and we're out at a golf course in uh, these leafy parts of Pollock Country Park I believe. I'm at Pollock Golf Club. We'll get set up and there's two things I've got to check and make sure we've got and that's um, suntan cream and sunglasses. Right, first tee shot out the way, used driver, hit it best I could and uh, blocked out by tree. So maybe not drive off the first, but you've seen in the backdrop the clubhouse. Honestly blew me away when I arrived, parked down low, walk up and that clubhouse is, uh, well, looks pretty special. I've not had a great deal of luck inside, I'll do that post round. But the good news is, is behind a camera woman, we've got a birdie put on the first. Can't be bad, sun's shining, loving this. Should we keep it? Should we still see if we birdie the first? Camera is still rolling. Only just held on the back, the greens look so lush, as does all the course. All, not all the course, I've seen the first and the 18th. Stop exaggerating, Anne, but you can tell. Uh, I'm looking forward to this one. I've got a feeling, first put of the day, these might be uh, a bit sharp. It's got a chance, you know. It's got a chance. Go on, Paul. Oh my word. What a start of the day that would have been. It just died a little bit of death, but as you can see, I took a load off that in terms of I hardly hit it. Really true roll, and uh, like I said, they look plenty quick enough. Just minutes from Glasgow city centre and set in a mature woodland, Pollock Golf Club, founded in 1892, was designed by the great Dr. Alistair Mackenzie. And at the time of release, this course can be played for £75 a round and is an absolute idyllic place to play some golf. Well, if you wanted our first impressions, three holes in, I would say absolutely stunning. The condition of the first three holes, immaculate, but the setting is, seriously, I can't believe the city centre is just a matter of a few miles away. I probably didn't make uh, as much as I should have done on the par 3 on the tee, the 6. It's a lovely little golf hole. One of the notable features around here is the way the, the green complexes are designed. That again was sort of fairly narrow and thin, almost like sort of kidney shaped again, and loads of movement in it. And when you get down to it, it looked a fairly generous green from the tee box, but when I got down there and actually hit the green, I was quite pleased that I did because it was a small target. But uh, once again, the theme is immaculately kept. I spoke to the uh, the caddy master before I went out and he said that the course is actually a little bit behind at the moment due to the temperatures that we've had literally right across the UK. So, uh, well, it's plenty good enough for me. I tell you, it's, it's really good. So with a bit of warm weather, I can imagine them greens can be like lightning. Go on. Oh, I had a pop in two on this par five. I, don't think oh, I think that should be in good nick. Not big enough to get there, but that's uh, two decent punts there on seven. A oh, really nice backdrop to play this from, but again, I've just mentioned uh, two big punts and I thought I was sat in the fringe there when I'm not. I'm sat in a very uh, well-placed, uh, well, strategically well-placed bunker. One to the right, one to catch your left short as well. So a par five, which has got to, well, ask you to have a little bit of a pop at it, but then uh, makes things difficult. Horrible little shot this for a, Average golfers. Yeah. Go. Not the best. That real tough one is sort of 30 yards, which, uh, well, just not good enough to play in the design of the course. Got me out. Got the better of me.
my ninth hole is stroke index one i hit an okay drive leaked it out a little bit right and uh, didn't quite make that first bunker even but what i've noticed so far about the design of the golf course is the way in which it sort of weaves its way through that tree line and ask you in terms of strategy to make sure you're on the right side of the fairways and not do what i've done probably two or three times actually be on the wrong side of it and uh, what you'll be asked the question is sort of the tree line will interfere with your line to the green i really like that so again stroke index one for a reason it's got plenty of length in it but also it's asking you to be a lot further uh, left off the tee than i have and then anyway, really i ain't going to travel in terms of height wise over the top of there so it's kind of you've then got to see whether or not and I like to try it is to try and move that little ball a little bit in uh, in the air and uh, I like to try it and often fail but I'll still be trying so we'll aim for the gap and see if we can chase one down there with a bit of a with a bit of left to right on it come on and you can do it well I couldn't do it and I've hit it straight get over oh my word it's hit nothing Well, it's gone through the back of the green, which was, I can't believe it, it's at 7 iron. I thought I was way out of, in terms of distance, bit of down breeze, and I've gone right through the middle of the trees. Nothing like what I uh, said I was going to do. Right, it's only the second par three we've played, uh, which is the 12th, and I think the first one was the 6th. One more to come, but one noticeable feature of the game was sort of how small the greens are. Uh, fairly tight, bunker left, bunker right. I had a fairly short iron in me, and pitched it just a little bit short, and... Well, left myself with what is a, uh, a pretty, well, no shot, I suppose, is what you'd call it. Um, we've got a pot one up over the bunker, but again, nice little design feature of the course. I love the way this course is laid, to be fair. We need a bit of Spanish hands here. Let's see if I've got any. Oh, hello. Sit down. Sit down, ball. Oh, do you know what? That still run 10, 10, 12 feet on for bogey, uh, but about as best as you could do. But like I said, an interesting feature on both the par threes. We've got one more to come. We'll see what that one looks like. Right, so with just two left to play, I can't say what a great day we've had. I mean, obviously, the, I've not played in this kind of weather for, uh, well, since last year. It's been absolutely superb. But the golf course itself, again, nice and easy in terms of walking. That's the interesting bit. There's no great changes in elevation, so very easy walking course. And the other thing is the generosity of the fairways. I said earlier, yeah, if you want to score, well, you're going to have to make sure you're on the right side of them strategically. But in terms of kind of... Uh, giving up a bit and uh, making this playable i think it's uh, it's 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 nice it's kind to all levels and that's important as well it is a really really nice parkland course to play that's the way i describe it impressed
make sure you come into the clubhouse afterwards and eat. Uh, they're called loaded fries, with Cajun chicken on them. I had a salad to uh, be healthy, you know. Oh, that's it. Pollock Golf Club is done and I really enjoyed that. I don't know which I enjoyed most, the kind of golf or those cheesy fries at the end because they were amazing as well. Don't, uh, whatever you do, if you're going to come, make sure you order them post round. But that's it. Back into the city centre, into the Village Hotel. And it's up early tomorrow morning for the second part of our inner city golf in Glasgow. It's Hags Castle. Sounds like something from Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs>